reality. It's everywhere these days. In our homes, in our schools, in our offices, and on the factory floors. In the parks and stadiums and concert halls where human beings relax, play, and unwind. You can pilot a solo canoe into the dense brush of the Canadian wilderness to land uncharted on any map, and still, you can't get away from it. Reality. The whole concept of reality has preoccupied philosophers for ages. What is it? Is reality independent of us or a product conjured by human minds? And where does it end? Opinions have been split across millennia, but there's one thing pretty much everyone can agree on, which is that there's just no escaping the nagging problem of reality. Or is there? Yo, bro, who got you smiling like that? Like, kill the light, so baby, close your eyes. Can anyone learn how to shift? I've been trying sleep methods for the last three weeks, okay? 11 attempts in total. Patience is the key to our shifting journey. People get too caught up, and they think that the harder they try, then they will gain the merits of shifting, like I did. That's how I thought. Truth be told, no. They're not gods, they're not celebrities. Unless you're shifting to gods or celebrities, then they are. <laughs> so a lot of us know that the first step to shifting is making your brain so tired that it stops caring. I believe in you. Go shift tonight. Welcome to Shift Talk. Sort of a weird thing to say out loud. It sounds like shit talk, but it's not. It is Shift Talk, an online community centered on TikTok promoting the idea of reality shifting. What is reality shifting? Well, hello, my name is Kristen. Online, I go by Christo. I've produced multiple videos online that have gone viral where I talk about the subject in detail and I've helped millions of people. So that's why I'm here talking today because I hope to bring some clarity on the issues and concerns that a lot of people have regarding the topic. So for people who aren't familiar, can you explain, you know, in your own words, this kind of emerging culture of reality shifting? When we look at just trends and stuff, when I posted my first video, it was around October of 2020. And so just the landscape at the time was, it was the middle of COVID. I believe like that had, that played an essential part in why like shifting just took off during that point in time. Shifting itself, I think because it was more of like an individual practice. You didn't have to be physically with someone. That was another reason why it got so popular because basically it's a journey with yourself. The whole sort of essence of shifting is you're taking your own consciousness and transposing it onto yourself on another reality, another plane of existence so that you can go and live about your life in whichever reality you choose. This really is like you are shifting, it's, it's your mind, but it is also your physical body, like you are physically in that other place. Is that, is that, is that correct? So it's mainly your consciousness that is okay. being sent it's, it's kind of like, think of things as like um, like a frequency. You have, like if one reality is a frequency like here, and then the reality that we're in is here, basically what we're doing is that we're shifting our frequency so that we align with the reality that we want to be in. And so then we consciously become aware of that reality and can then start, you know, existing in it. It's as simple as that. Stress to work, relationship woes, just bored. Imagine your consciousness like an enormous train yard, and you're the switchman. You can, as easily as thinking about it, shift your mind onto another track in order to inhabit, like literally inhabit, a neighboring reality. At least, that's the theory, and it's one that has gained traction online with billions of videos on TikTok alone dedicated to the science and practice of shifting between realities. That's right, with a little mindfulness and the right guide, you can go on a date with Draco Malfoy, Catch a matinee with the Incredible Hulk. The boundaries of your imagination are the only perimeter. But how, exactly, does one shift? According to this WikiHow article, it requires just a few basic steps. They are, one, choose your desired reality, or DR as it's called. It can be a past memory, it can be a fantasy world from your own imagination or JK Rowling's. It can even be a combination of fantasy worlds like some Lord of the Rings, Johnny Bravo collab, whatever, two, Script that reality. Write an outline to establish the particulars of your DR and your place in it. Three, create a time ratio. This is designed to manage the disparity in the perception of time between your current reality, or CR, and your DR. For example, a one to 10 ratio might mean that one minute in your current reality equals 10 minutes in your DR. Four, with that out of the way, it's time to get into the serious business of shifting. 
calm your mind using grounding exercises, deep breathing, or focusing on a single object in the room that you're in. Five, choose a shifting method. There's the Raven method, where you lie down with your arms outstretched like a big old bird, and don't worry, there's a whole separate wiki how explaining this, by the way. Or the Alice in Wonderland method, where you imagine someone from your DR coming into your CR, and then you follow them through the proverbial looking glass. Six, use subliminals like soft music or white noise to help you focus your thoughts. Seven, be sure to take a mental inventory of any shifting symptoms which may have come up. These may include numbness or tingling or a feeling of free falling. These symptoms are, I guess, actually good because they show that you are actually shifting. Actually. Eight, you've shifted. Great. Feel free to roam around your DR and explore to your heart's content. You've done it. You have shifted realities. This all seems very strange and interesting. It sort of recalls Konstantin Stanislavski's comprehensive system of stage and screen performance called the method or method acting. It's a way for actors to totally psychologically immerse themselves in a character or role. And maybe it's no surprise that this phenomenon has gained a lot of traction on TikTok where, unlike other social networks, users are often expected to perform themselves. But isn't shifting even more basic than that? Isn't this just imagination or daydreaming? What, you may wonder, makes reality shifting so different from the common everyday practice of thinking about something? The answer may lie in another pop culture trend, the multiverse. Over the past few years, movies, films, and TV shows have obsessed over the idea that there is not merely one vast, endless, unbounded, infinite universe, rather there are vast, endless, unbounded, infinite number of universes. This vast latticework of universes, universi, are sometimes termed the multiverse. You see this in a lot of big blockbusters lately. Several Spider-Man movies deal with it to the extent that in those properties, an infinitude of Spider-Man occupy a proverbial Spider-Verse. Warner Brothers recent movie, The Flash, also dealt with multiverse stuff, and in some other dimension, people may have actually seen it. Even a slightly more serious Oscar-winning hit like Everything Everywhere All at Once dealt with the idea of parallel dimensions and selves and all kinds of various realities filled with various Michelle Yeohs. Doctor Strange, Rick and Morty, the multiverse is becoming so popular that even the internet's nerdiest nerds seem to be tiring of it. As a storytelling technique, the multiverse is a way of taking established characters or intellectual properties and tweaking them a bit to make them seem new or novel. At a deeper level, multiverse stories ask us to imagine what the Argentine surrealist author Jorge Luis Borges called the Garden of Forking Paths, exploring what alternate realities might emerge if we, as individuals, as a whole civilization, made different decisions. And it's not strictly a modern day concept. I mean, Borges was not modern day. Also, sliders? Remember sliders with Jerry O'Connell? But is there any real basis for this slippery, slidey multiverse or many worlds theory? Like in reality? You finally know 100% shifting is real. Look, I'm probably not the best guy to explain this. I'm no quantum physicist. I host a Blink-182 podcast and this YouTube show, and this is my actual shirt and I own several just like it. But as I understand it, based on some cursory Googling and the movie Oppenheimer, it sort of goes like this. First, we had classical physics, stuff you learn about in high school, like gravity and thermodynamics and the basic laws of motion. Then in the 20th century, some brainiacs came up with quantum mechanics. This shift shattered our shared conception of a more basic high school level common sense reality to suggest that all possible outcomes of an experiment or an event can somehow exist simultaneously. At a quantum level, every action can produce not just the reaction we witness in our physical reality, but every other reaction witnessed in some alternative reality. So remember in 2019, when Kawhi Leonard had that nutty buzzer beater that advanced the Raptors past the Philadelphia 76ers in the playoffs and made everyone in Philadelphia hate everyone in Toronto forever. Well, there is a version of reality where the ball only bounces once. And there's a version where, God forbid, it doesn't go in at all. And there's probably a version where Kawhi Leonard doesn't even ball and works as a postman or something. Call it Schrodinger's Basket or Schrodinger's Kawhi. <laughs> so the idea of reality shifting might have some merit. If indeed we live, as physicists since the 1920s have pretty much insisted, in a quantum reality, then there just might be an endless number of other possible realities existing alongside the one we experience day to day. Reality shifting is an attempt to access those realities, and people who do it swear they're doing it. They close their eyes, they focus, and they're there. But something else bugs me. Let's go back to that wiki how about shifting. 
which I assume is the definitive manual ever written on the subject. So many of the prompts, like focusing of the mind, or using white noise and soft music, or grounding oneself in the physical space, those all seem like part and parcel of any meditative practice. Is reality shifting literally just the latest iteration of an ancient tradition of self-reflection, or what nowadays gets called mindfulness? Hi, I'm Jade. I also go by Jonathan Smart. Um, I started doing TikTok videos and YouTube content about shifting about two years, three years ago. I remember when I first started making videos on TikTok, I was like, this chick is delusional. She's crazy. Like, what is she talking about? I'm like, girl, go take your meds, this, that, the other. And it was, it was, it was absolutely ridiculous. And then eventually more and more creators started coming out and it was really like a few people that really understood the whole concept of it. It was basically a whole idea that you could create the reality around you. And a lot of that left a lot of people scared that, it, you know, there was like a whole dissociation thing behind it. A lot of people were going schizo and, and it was just, there was a lot of misconception behind it. But in reality, funny enough, um, the reality of it was it was just a form of putting your subconscious in a deep enough t state to understand itself. And um, it was almost like a deeper form of dreaming in a way. A lot of people tried to tie it to uh, astral projection, which I mean was a whole different concept in itself. And a lot of people tried to do lucid dreaming, which is also another concept in itself. It was like a little in between, bo between both of them. And I tried to really explain that the best I could, especially during my time in this community. So my whole ideal was here, let me give you some examples from my life, which you might relate to that could tie into this topic. And one of those had been Buddhism and Buddhist meditation. I'm Shinto Buddhist, and so basically what it is is really calming your mind, reflecting, and a lot of Buddhist practices are to reflect upon yourself. And some of their teachings dives into the subconscious, so understanding why you feel things and what the true meaning behind your thoughts are. Not specifically saying like, oh my God, yes, it had to do completely with the religion. It was just the fact that I had been doing meditation because of the religion and I got so used to that, like getting into that deeper state of mind, it was easier for me to adapt to these concepts. So reality shifting is basically just meditating, but obviously it's not just that. More typical Buddhist meditation practices are all about emptying the mind of thoughts, of cultivating a mental calm and tranquility. The goal is to generate a sense of detachment, of a deeper knowledge of oneself. It's not about imagining that you're flying around a wizard academy on a broomstick. It's like all those ubiquitous pop culture franchises have crept into our own dreaming consciousness, colonizing the free range of imagination itself. Are we increasingly being forced to meditate on the inner workings of the Star Wars or Harry Potter canons? When we dream, even lucidly, can we only dream of Goku or R2-D2 or Bilbo Baggins? It's hard not to feel sort of down about this. Like even our waking dreams are being franchised. Just like the movies and shows that have popularized the whole many worlds multiverse idea, the whole trend seems to proceed from a deeper lament that things in this boring, workaday reality are just not okay, and that we'll do whatever we can to try to get away from it. Still, maybe in a world of infinite distraction where streaming platforms nag us to ask, are you still watching? There's something refreshing about spending any time at all adrift in your own imagination, regardless of whatever the fuck is going on in there. The whole reality shifting, dimension hopping thing does speak to something we see time and time again online. Nothing can just be. Dreaming, or meditating, or just having an imagination. These aren't enough. Everything has to be categorized and ordered, and then subdivided and organized again. Musical genres, memes, even modes of consciousness. Naming these things has a way of making them real. Just like all those flags the Somnivexillologists dream up. Just like the word Somnivexillology itself. I guess reality, like the internet, is what you make it. And sure, why not? That reality can include the idea that there are infinity other realities all around us and that you can phase between them with some mindfulness and some focus and some chill music.